I get reluctant from sampling because of, you know, the sample police be after me. <laughs> so, hey, this is Keith Shockley, uh, producer of one of the greatest rap groups, I think. One of the greatest rap groups. Uh, Public Enemy, uh, original member of the Bomb Squad production team. Uh, been here since, you know, we, we, well, we've been here since the beginning of time. <laughs> has the fact that the legal system is now a part of what you have to think about, how has that created or affected how you create your music? Oh, uh, that has, has now it's, it's affected a lot. It sort of makes me gun shy, you know, because now, you know, if I grab a sample, it's like, all right, if somebody recognizes what it is, how much is it going to cost me? You know, it's like, then it becomes to the point like, wow, it's going to cost me, who knows, maybe 75% of what I make on the record. Or somebody won $100,000 for the sample. It doesn't make sense. It's like, you know what? That's for the rich DJs. You know, I'm not saying rich DJs, the rich producers. <laughs> like Kanye can afford that, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Just Blaze don't mind paying that. You know, I do mind. I don't want to do that. It's interesting that like sampling has now become something for the the rich, the, the rich rappers, yeah. or the producers the to rich do. Producers. Yeah. But that's like the antithesis of why sampling even came into existence. Yeah. Then we came into existence because yeah, because we, we wasn't the rich. <laughs> we just knew we just knew what we liked. Making something yeah. out of nothing. Yes. To some degree. Yeah, that's even better. I I you know. <laughs> For me, coming from the back, the backbreaking world of DJing to now, yeah, I have my love hate because now you got anybody with an iTunes playlist to call themselves a DJ, and I get that, I'm cool with that. But then when they're out there going out and getting crazy money, and you you're not really DJing, you know, you're pressing buttons, you got controllers. I love controllers, but the actual, like I said, the actual skill of it. You're not with that. You know, you're not really, you're not, you know, let me see a DJ go in and rock a party for like six or seven hours straight. Only to this day I start to go back over and see stuff where I see like, you know, uh, you know, Kanye great at sampling and cutting up, but he's great at rearranging a two bar loop or a four bar loop. Great at that. And chopping up and putting it in different places. So when cats like Knife One of them cats is like crazy at that kind of stuff. Um, but when you snatching a horn hit from a, I don't know, from a Muscle Shoals record, snatching a bass line from somebody like, uh, I don't know, maybe an ACDC bass note, <laughs> you know, like a two bar bass, and you combining that together, and then your keyboards come from a maybe, a second of a Billy Preston record, you know, so we're mashing shit together like that to come out with another song. Okay, so having been on both sides of it, do you feel any differently now that, you know, you debatably lost a considerable amount of money off of being ripped by Lenny Kravitz for a Madonna track? Yeah. And then you've also taken pieces of audio from other people and done yeah, somewhat the opposite thing. Mm -hmm. So now that it's come full circle, do you feel differently about sampling? See, this is what this is. Now see, this is <laughs> this. That's the the number one question of the year. We don't even give a shit <laughs> because we're from that era. It, it's it's hard, man. It's very hard, you know. Because as a producer and as an artist. Sometimes I flip to the side of like, yeah, you sample my shit. I should be getting. <laughs> I should be getting. But then the producer side comes to me like, yeah, Keith, well, you did the same shit. You know? Yeah, you know what? It's my last question, and this is like the big question, really. Oh. Is do you think that there's a way for the legal system and sampling or how things are progressing? for creative minds to coexist? Like, do you think that there's some sort of thing that the US government could come up with that would make all parties happy? Mmm. Mmm. Wow, that's a good one. No. 
You don't think so? I, I don't. I don't think so. Where, because, where, the original. I'm gonna say like the the owners of those, which would be the publishers. They're not trying to hear nothing. They like you use my record. I want my money. I don't care how you used it, what it is. We don't give a shit about the art form or how creative you are. You took my original record and you're making and you sold two million copies of it. I want my money out of it. You know, it's it's so deep, man. It's like, you know, we find ways to get around it, but we don't make money on samples. Man. We don't make money on the records. You know, we just got giveaways. We got around it, but you ain't making no money. Which doesn't help. It doesn't help artists. No, nah, doesn't help the artists office. because you still have to spend money to make that profit. Oh, don't I know it? <laughs> you got to spend it to make that profit. So it's like, how do you, how do you do that? Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> <laughs>